HS, we couldn't see past the second pole. Like the first pole was there, all the other poles disappeared. They just disappeared off the video. They were not there. Okay, and the eight millimeter, the poles were getting very fuzzy, but you could at least still see them. So everything seemed to be holding its own. So we said eight millimeter is better VHS. The next step was what's coming up next? Super VHS. Super VHS. And of course, as soon as this came out, two other formats appeared about the same time. One of them is called ED Beta, Extended Definition Beta. And the other one is high 8 Well, the first thing we tested was extended definition beta versus v SVHS. Here's what we found about extended definition beta. And I won't talk about this long because very few people are ever going to get this stuff. It's very rare. Sony has a camera out for it that's about $10,000 in Canadian dollars. So not many people are going to buy this camera. But we tested it anyway. Comparing to Super VHS, here's what we found. Color saturation was better. Sharpness, not as good. Not as sharp. as Super VHS, image stability way better. Again, typical beta format. Better stability, not as sharp. But you know what? The not as sharp part was almost pleasing. Like Super VHS is sometimes almost too sharp. So this is almost not as sharp, but in that case, almost an advantage. Uh, the biggest problem with ED Beta uses metal tape. And this metal tape is expensive. But besides being expensive, I don't think they've perfected metal tape yet. Because this tape had more dropouts than you could imagine. A dropout, if you're watching a video screen, all a dropout means is a wisp that goes by as you're watching the screen. Could be black, white, blue, any color, just wisps. There are so many wisps in this tape that I said to myself, the surface must be flaking off as we play it. I mean, that's how bad it was. It was horrible. And I haven't seen any good metal tape yet. So for that reason alone, I reject that format. Unless they get their tape act together, I wouldn't play with ED Beta. Then we said, well, what about high 8 millimeter? So we did that test, and here's what we found. Color saturation better again. Typical Sony, they're excellent on color. Sony has got color down better than anybody, no question about it. Sharpness, um, I would not only say sharpness, I'd say it's, uh, sharpness was bad. Just bad is all I can describe it as. Image stability, image stability is good. It's good again. In fact, the image stability is better than um, SVHS, typical though. VHS is not a stable format, it moves a lot. What was my conclusion? Well, I got concerned about the sharpness being so bad, so I dubbed it down uh, to second generation and then to third. And this was uh, horrible, you know, and this was more horrible. <laughs> it's just so bad. I mean, it's so bad that it doesn't matter how good the color saturation was, I was already sick of looking at the picture. It just didn't do anything for me. And the other thing that I noticed, just like with the uh, ED beta, we had dropouts. Tons of dropouts again. So I don't know what's happening with this metal tape. They're having lots of problems with it because there's way too many dropouts for my satisfaction. And it takes that special expensive tape. Question, how can you overcome the shakiness problem of VHS? The way we correct it and the way we know how bad it is, is we have something called a time-based corrector. It's a special device and it corrects the signal being put out by a machine that's playing it. Now we're playing the video out of an $8,500 machine, so we're not playing it out of a cheap machine that's going to have crappy heads. And the image is going like this. We zap it through the time-based corrector and look at it on the other monitor, rock steady. So we can see the difference between an uncorrected image and a corrected image. I can show you that we have, uh, during weddings, we have windows going up like this. Here's what they look like on the uncorrected tape. The, wind, the, the lines of the windows are going up and curving at the top. We come through the time-based corrector and the window lines look like that. Straight up and perfect as can be. And not only that, but you see the jitter at the top. It's just not holding in the same spot. Now again, you'll notice it on areas where there's, not, where there's nothing moving. That's why I love to shoot calendar pictures when I'm doing tests. Because with a calendar picture, there's nothing moving. But anyway, my vote would be between these two. If I had to go SVHS or high 8 it's pretty obvious. I'd, from what my experiences are so far, I would take that. But if I was in regular between VHS and 8mm, I would take that if it was just from the standpoint of making my own productions. But if I take other things into account, like what am I going to do with the machine? Watch movies? Rent movies? Well, if renting movies is important to you, then this looks more attractive. Because you can't rent 8mm movies. Not commonly, anyway. So it depends what you're using it for, but for making productions, this is better. And then what about editing? You say, well, how am I going to edit my 8mm stuff? There's not too many things out on the market to edit 8mm. There's a few things, but there's a lot more products coming on the market now for editing um, VHS. Uh, there is a unit out for editing 8mm, regular 8mm, 
and it's made by Sony, and it's, and it's uh, $8,000. But it's nice. It's a very nice unit. This concludes Modules 1, 2, and 3. You have learned about the equipment required to shoot weddings, proper camera techniques, and recording sound. You are now familiar with planning a wedding shoot and what to do at a rehearsal. Please continue with Modules 4, 5, and 6 on Tape 2. Before viewing this segment on the video toaster, we highly recommend that you watch Module 6 on post-production, especially the part on titling and special effects. After doing so, you will be much better able to understand the effects created on the video toaster. This video is not intended to teach you how to use the video toaster software. We will assume you have gone through the manual and its tutorials. The purpose of this instruction is to provide some creative ideas for wedding videos using the Amiga computer and NewTek video toaster in various configurations. If you do not own a video toaster, you may find this section a little difficult to follow. Rather than getting bogged down in details, simply enjoy the end results being produced and accept them for their creative purposes. What is the video toaster? and what can it do? The toaster is a video graphics adapter designed to work with the Amiga computer. In combination with Nutex software, the toaster gives you the ability to greatly enhance your wedding productions with digital video effects, video titling, chroma processing, and much, much more. The Video Toaster Environment We do not consider the Video Toaster to be practical for shooting weddings on location. It's a little hard to imagine bringing an entire Amiga 2000 computer system to a church and patching two, three, or four cameras into it. Instead, we see the toaster as a post-production tool. With the toaster, you'll be able to take the camcorder footage you have shot during the wedding day and greatly enhance the end product with professional looking results. Video Equipment Requirements If you want to use the video toaster with moving videotape playing out of your source VCR, you will require a Time Base Corrector or TBC. You will have to purchase a TBC unless your source VCR has one already built in. Because of the mechanical nature of the transport device that moves the tape across the video head inside your VCR, no machine is capable of playing back a perfectly stable video signal without the help of a time base corrector. To achieve a stable signal from rolling video, you must feed the video out from your source deck into the TBC, then take the output from the TBC and feed it into the video toaster. There is one other very important consideration when purchasing a TBC. Some TBCs on the market, like the Panasonic TBC200, must send a special signal called Advanced Sync in order to work properly with a VCR. This means that your source VCR must have a sync in jack in order to lock into the TBC's Advanced Sync. Without sync, the video image will periodically pop up and down on the screen and is unusable. Very few consumer VCRs have the ability to receive advanced sync. You have two choices. Either you must purchase a high-end professional VCR with advanced sync capability, or you can purchase a TBC that does not require the use of advanced sync. Since you already likely own your VCR, you are much better off purchasing a TBC which does not require advanced sync. An example of such a TBC is the Nova Model 920 SP. It has full field memory and can therefore work with any VCR without feeding advanced sync. There are numerous companies working feverishly to produce relatively inexpensive TBCs to work with the Amiga computer and the video toaster. 
watch the various camcorder and Amiga publications for ads and announcements. Having said this, let's see what video equipment you need to work with the toaster. The bare minimum configuration consists of a source machine which can either be a video camera or a camcorder without a TBC. You will need a second machine to serve as an editing deck. A medium configuration consists of a source machine which can be a VCR with built-in TBC or a camcorder with built-in TBC. For an editing deck you will need another VCR. A deluxe configuration consists of two or more source machines. All of these VCRs must be equipped with genlockable TBCs. Another VCR will serve as the editing deck. Computer equipment requirements. The minimum equipment required to use the video toaster consists of an Amiga 2000 or Amiga 2500 computer with 5 to 7 megabytes of RAM, 7 megabytes is much better than 5, and a 20 to 40 megabyte hard disk drive. The medium configuration consists of an Amiga 2000 or Amiga 2500 computer with expanded RAM 7 to 9 megabytes and a 50 to 100 megabyte hard disk drive. A deluxe system consists of an Amiga 2000 or Amiga 2500 computer or an Amiga 3000T computer with expanded RAM 7 to 16 megabytes and a 68030 accelerated microprocessor operating at 28, 33 or 50 megahertz speed preferably with a 68882 math coprocessor or a 68040 microprocessor and a 100 to 600 megabyte hard disk drive. What can you do with the minimum configuration? Freeze, mosaic, paint, montages, titling, many of the toaster digital video effects between still stores, titles keyed over still stores. With the minimum configuration, you can only feed the toaster with a single video source coming directly from a video camera or camcorder. You cannot feed moving videotape from your camcorder unless the camcorder has a built-in time base corrector. Furthermore, you cannot feed two or more cameras into the toaster unless the cameras can be externally synchronized. This feature is currently only available on high-end professional video cameras not consumer camcorders. For wedding videos there are still a large number of interesting effects you can achieve with the minimum configuration. Most of these effects can be used to enhance the wedding videos with freeze frames and titling. Exercise number one. In this exercise we'll capture an image from a wedding photo and put a title over it. Because we cannot use moving videotape, you will have to capture your images from photographs, wedding invitations, or artwork. Attach the video out cable from your camera to input number one on the toaster. Attach another video cable from program out on the toaster to video in on the VCR deck you are using for editing. Carefully compose the photograph and use your zoom lens to crop the desired area. Watch the TV monitor so you can align everything properly. You may have to use the macro zoom feature of your camera if the photo or artwork is small. For added flexibility, you can purchase a set of close-up lenses that simply screw onto the front of the camera's lens. Using the mouse, click on number one on the program bus and number one on the preview bus. Next, Click on Freeze. Save the image on your hard drive by clicking on the Save gadget and entering an appropriate name for the photo. Now, load the Character Generator software. Select Key Page by pressing F1, then F3. Choose an appropriate font and enter the text for the title in a suitable position. You may enhance the font by adding color, drop shadow, and outline. 
When done, press the escape key to get back to the switcher. Click on the frame button in the keypad window and load the freeze frame from disk. Press the return key or click on take to display the image. Click on the CG page select button in the keypad window and load the title screen. Press the space bar and the title will be overlaid onto the freeze frame. You could have titles scrolling over the still photo by selecting the scroll page. Press F1 then F5 and entering the desired text. After pressing the escape key to get back to the switcher, click on the frame button in the keypad window and load the freeze frame from disk. Press the return key or click on take to display the image. Click on DV1 of the preview bus if the image is in DV1 of the program bus. Click on DV2 of the preview bus if the image is in DV2 of the program bus. Click on the CG page select button in the keypad window and load the scrolling title page. Press the space bar and the scrolling title will be overlaid onto the freeze frame. Exercise number two. In this exercise, we'll make our freeze frame into a mosaic and put a title over it. In Module 6, you saw that a still frame could be converted into a mosaic with a Panasonic WJ-MX10 or WJ-MX12. Well, you can also mosaic a still frame using the toaster paint software. You will need at least 7 megabytes of memory in your Amiga to do this. Load toaster paint, then load the wedding picture frame from the hard disk. Use the rectangular brush tool and grab the entire screen as a brush. Make sure the brush size is exactly 736 by 480 by pressing the letter G on the keyboard to reveal the coordinates. Copy this brush using the swap submenu. Press the period key on the keyboard to release the brush. Clear the screen by pressing the shift key and the letter K. Now, activate texture map from the mode menu. Turn transparency, hotspot, and warping off if any of these have previously been activated. Select the rectangle tool and turn on the fill button. Hold down the alternate key and draw a small rectangle anywhere on the blank screen. About 100 pixels wide is a good starting point. Delete the swap brush from the swap submenu. Cut out a new brush the exact size of the reduced picture on the screen. Copy this new brush using the swap submenu. Clear the screen again by pressing the shift key and the letter K. Again, activate texture map from the mode menu. Select the freehand button and then the flood fill button. Click the left mouse button anywhere on the screen. In a few minutes, a mosaic version of the original freeze frame will appear on the screen. Press F10 to render the image on your monitor. If you like the result, save the picture with a new file name and frame number. If the pixels are too coarse, it means your reduced rectangle was made too small. Repeat the entire procedure and make a larger version of the reduced rectangle. If the pixels are too fine, it means your reduced rectangle was too large. Repeat the entire procedure and make a smaller version of the reduced rectangle. 
This may seem like a lot of steps, but it's really quite easy. You have total control of the ultimate coarseness of the mosaic simply by deciding what size you make the reduced rectangle. To place a title over the mosaic image, save the mosaic image you have created, then follow the steps in exercise number one previously shown. Exercise number three. In this exercise, we'll create a variety of shaped mats around photographs, add color around the mats, and switch from one matted picture to another using the toaster's switcher. Note you will need at least seven megabytes of memory in your Amiga to do this. Capture three or four freeze frames from photographs or artwork as presented in exercise number one. Go into toaster paint and load one of these frames. To make a circular mat, select the filled circle and the brush tool. Cut out a brush centered around the main subject in the photograph. Clear the screen by pressing the shift key and the letter K. Position the brush near the center of the screen coordinates 368 and 240. Click the left mouse button to stamp the brush down. Press F10 to render the output to the TV monitor. If the position is poor, click on Undo and try repositioning. When the position is satisfactory, Press the period key on the keyboard to release the brush. The result looks pretty good. However, a black mat is not very interesting. Let's give the mat some color. Before doing this, we're going to draw a circular outline around the picture. Choose the round dot brush and make it fairly small. Pick a dark color from the palette and select the open circle tool. Place the origin of the circle at the exact same coordinates as the photo on the screen, 368 and 240. Draw out a hollow circle which totally encloses the photo. To be on the safe side, save your work on the hard disk now. Next, we're going to make the mat. Press J on the keyboard to go to the swap screen. Pick a color from the palette or make a color range if you prefer. Select the freehand button then the flood fill button. Click the left mouse button anywhere on the screen. In a few minutes the mat will fill the screen. Press F10 to view the mat on the TV monitor. If you like the mat, go on to the next stage. If you want to change the mat, click the undo button and try again. You can get some beautiful effects by experimenting with the hotspot and transparency sliders to modify the appearance of the color mat. Always press F10 to view the result on the TV monitor. When you are satisfied, press J on the keyboard to return to the photo. Select Rub Through from the mode menu and make certain that both Hotspot and Transparency are turned off. Using Flood Fill, click the mouse anywhere on the black part of the screen. In a few minutes, you will see the photo surrounded by the mat you have designed. Save the resulting frame on disk. Repeat the above procedure to create one or more matted photos. Experiment with matte shapes, matte colors, and texture mapping for truly creative results. Quit toaster paint and return to the switcher interface. Load one of your masterpieces into DV1 and another into DV2. 
select Fade or any of the other switcher effects and record the desired result on videotape. Exercise number four. In this exercise, we'll create a video montage of the wedding day. Our clients really like these special montages, which effectively show all the highlights of the special day on a single screen. We're dealing with a minimum configuration of video equipment. However, this exercise still requires 7 megabytes of RAM in the Amiga. As done in exercise number one, start by capturing 5 to 10 images from wedding day photographs and saving them on the hard disk. These photos should include key events of the day, such as the bride getting ready before church, the giving away ceremony, exchange of rings, receiving line, cake cutting, first dance, etc. Using toaster paint, create a skeleton for the montage by drawing various outline shapes on the screen. Design an attractive layout of rectangles and ovals of various sizes as shown here. Preferably use a consistent color for the borders and keep the color fairly dark. When you have the pattern you like, save the result on the hard disk. Press J to go to the swap screen. Load one of the wedding pictures from the hard disk. Use the rectangular tool or ellipse tool and click on the brush button to crop out the main area of interest in the photo. Copy this brush using the swap submenu. Activate texture map from the mode menu. Press the period key on the keyboard to release the brush. Clear the screen by pressing the shift key and the letter K. Press J to return to the montage screen. Turn transparency hotspot and warping off if any of these have previously been activated. Using flood fill, click the mouse anywhere inside the outline of your choice. Repeat the above procedure to fill all the outlines in the montage with the highlight photos of the wedding day. As done in exercise number three, you can change the black mat surrounding the pictures to any color or texture of your choice. Remember, always save your work on the hard disk as you go. What can you do with the medium configuration? All of the above plus capturing freeze frames from moving video using most of the toaster digital video effects from still stores to moving video, titling over moving video, chroma effects. In the medium configuration, we have added one critical ingredient, a TBC on the source VCR. This opens up a whole new realm of available wedding shots because every frame of a video is a potential freeze frame for the toaster to capture. The exercises just demonstrated can be done by taking all your best stills from the footage that you have shot. You won't have to depend on other people to provide you with still photographs. Let's look at some more ideas for creative toaster effects. Exercise number five. In this exercise, we'll perform a transition from a freeze frame to incoming video. This is easy. Attach your source VCR, which has the TBC, to input number one on the toaster. 
In this example, we'll use the montage created above as an introduction to the video. Load the montage into either DV1 or DV2. Cue the source VCR footage that you want to begin the video with. Select program input number one on the toaster interface and smooth fade for the transition. Bring the montage to the program bus. Cue your video on the source VCR and cue your edit point on the editing machine. Start recording the montage from the toaster and when the desired footage from the source VCR comes along, press the space bar on the keyboard to invoke the dissolve from the montage to the rolling video. With only one TBC, you will use this effect often to go from a still frame or a title page to your moving video. Exercise number six. In this exercise, we'll spice up the action of the first dance with chroma processing to create surrealistic images. Connect your VCR as described in exercise number five and cue up the dance segment of interest. Select program input number one on the toaster interface, then choose the chroma effects software. For dance action, cyclic solarization will look great. Press 04 and enter on the numeric keypad to call up the cycle solar effect. Click the clapboard button with the left mouse button to render the effect. Start the source VCR and pull down on the T-bar and record the cyclic solarization on the editing VCR. Experiment with other chroma effects, but remember not to overuse them or you'll bore your viewers. What can you do with the deluxe configuration? All of the above plus AB rolls and all toaster digital video effects between two moving sources of video. Split screens and dissolves planned out in advance. With the deluxe configuration, up to four source VCRs with moving videotape may be used. Any of these can be activated from the toaster's interface. If multiple cameras are used to shoot the wedding, you can edit from one vantage point to another simply by selecting any of the four sources on the program bus. With some pre-planning, you can shoot the wedding with toaster effects in mind. For example, at the reception you could shoot the MC on the right hand side of the viewfinder with one camcorder and capture the bride and groom on the left hand side of the viewfinder with the second camcorder. When editing, select a vertical wipe and split the screen in half. You'll obtain a very entertaining result showing the MC's antics and the head table's reactions simultaneously. By familiarizing yourself with most of the toaster's effects, you can pre-plan much of your original coverage of the wedding events with editing in mind. One final precautionary note. Do not use the video toaster as a bailout for poor wedding videography and do not overuse its special effects. You are showcasing the wedding day, not making a rock video. If your original footage is bad, no amount of high-tech video gear will make it look right. Obey the rules of good composition and follow the guidelines set forth in modules 3, 4 and 5. With this, your raw footage will be great. You'll have the basic coverage necessary for making a high quality video. Remember, post-production is only intended to creatively enhance the video you have shot. Good luck in your wedding videography.
Should you have any questions on the video toaster or any portion of the Shoot Great Wedding videos program, please contact either Malcolm or Myron Actman. Adida Video Incorporated, Calgary, Alberta, phone 403-274-7494.